um, things that we've learned thus far before we get into the um, situation now. Let's kind of build it up and give a little timeline because we have a lot of people listening tonight that haven't listened the past couple of weeks, and I, I'd like to catch them up and bring them up to speed if that's all right, Griff. Sure. So what would you like, where would you like me to grab it? Just, uh, just where we start. What, is, what are the potential dangers here? What are we talking about? Um, and what are the things that you've learned thus far along the way, especially in the last couple of weeks that we've been talking? And we're, we're now talking about the uh, Gulf oil, right? Correct, correct. Okay. We can talk about a lot of different topics, and uh, sometimes I, um, I, I jump the track there and get on something else. Well, um, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to grab it. Like, <laughs> let, me, let me think just a second here. Um, we have a lethal situation going right now. We have a, a situation where everybody is not telling the truth. The people are in jeopardy right now. The people that go to bed tonight along the Gulf Coast and in Florida are putting their lives in jeopardy, we feel. Um, they, uh, they drilled into a, what they call a deep well, and it was. The, uh, the, they've surpassed, they've gone beyond their technology. They can no longer cope with events at that depth. The, the technology is simply not there. It's totally out of control. Uh, the pressures that they encountered at that depth were way, way beyond anything that has been encountered before in, in uh, BP history or, or history or anybody's history. They tapped into a huge uh, reservoir of uh, oil and other chemicals, gases, methane. It's huge. It, 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 if you can imagine it covering the entire floor, uh, of the Gulf of Mexico or a large part of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it's totally beyond their control. The pressures cannot be controlled. If they had controlled it, if the well had not um, blown, they still wouldn't have been able to control it because of those pressures. It probably would have lifted all of the, all of the, uh, the service uh, pipe and uh, blowout preventer right off the ground. We've heard different numbers. Nobody knows the exact number, but we've heard anything up to 100,000 pounds per square inch. I believe that was the highest number we've heard come out of there, and and nobody knows. But uh, 100,000 pounds, if you can imagine in the palm of your hand, one square inch, one inch by one inch by one inch by one inch, and then you put 100,000 pounds pressing down on that square, you get an idea of, of what what they're dealing with. Uh, the machinery will not hold up under that pressure. So to stop stop the oil flowing out of that is an impossible thing. They can't do it. Now we're we're of the opinion and have reason to believe that the oil is leaking out of cracks in the floor of the Gulf in different places away from the original hole. It is absolutely impossible to stop that. They're digging one or two extra wells in an effort to stop the leakage from the floor, from the cracks that are appearing in the floor of the Gulf. They are not digging those wells to stop the original, um, where the blowout preventer and the pipe, where the original well was drilled. It's not for that. It's Is that right? It coming out of the cracks. That's one of the reasons they're in such great jeopardy down there. If it's coming out of the floor in various places, that accounts for all the oil on the surface around the ships. They're only spraying the, uh, the, the chemistry around the original hole that I know of, that I've heard. So you, you get a better understanding of what they got hold of down there. Mm -hmm. They don't want the press to see it. And it's a very dangerous thing on top of that. I don't... I don't um, really believe the emphasis is on protecting the reporters or protecting the citizens. I think it's more on the liability and, and things like that. Um, so that's, that's the picture of what you have going on on top of the, uh, the original well on the water. If a methane bubble, huge methane, broke loose, if the floor cracked and, and a gazillion cubic feet of methane came up at one time, all of the ships would sink immediately. Everything on the service would go down and they would die immediately. 
the methane bubble would would not support the ships. The water would, but the methane would not. So they would all die. You know. Now, some, now, uh, why? How? How's that, Griff? Just, just to give a little. Why? Why would the ships sink immediately? What would? What would cause that? What? What would that? Well, methane... just imagine. Just imagine a giant methane bubble coming up. Mm -hmm. Of gas. Under the ships. Oh, so you're talking like uh, capsize and everything else. Well, they would go straight down. It would be nothing to hold them. Oh, I the, see. Okay. The, wa the water, in simple language, the water makes the boats float on top of the water, but they won't float on top of a methane gas bubble. I understand now. Thank you for so, educating me on that. <laughs> it, is, it is not a complicated thing, but it takes a, a second or two to get your mind around that because it's not uh, part of normal uh, normal thinking, you know. You don't have that come up in conversation very often. <laughs> That's that's what what that looks like. Um, I can I can see some of the secrecy or some of the uh, the efforts to keep the people back. I can understand that from from different perspectives, from the legal perspective, from the. I I cannot understand though. We heard a report the other day that some of the servers were blocking was blocking a conversation that referenced uh, some technical aspects of what was going on down there. Uh, reporters were unable to put uh, certain parts of certain stories on the internet uh, from that area, so they were they were actually blocking and censoring some of the internet. Now that would be uh, that would be Homeland Security. That would be the federal government. That wouldn't be mm -hmm. uh, uh, BP. BP is a foreign, um, even though it's owned uh, primarily by American banking interests. Uh, they have large blocks of ownership. Um, they are still a foreign company. Now, the idea of a foreign company walking on our beach and dictating to American citizens about being on their beach is repulsive to me. And the idea that American law enforcement down there would support a foreign company dictating to citizens, and the idea of Homeland Security supporting a foreign company dictating to Americans is, is beyond repulsive. I, I, can't, uh, I have a hard time dealing with that. As do I, as do I, Griff. And, and everybody out there that's listening should have a problem with that. It kind of, you know, let's take a look at it poetically speaking from a, here we are broadcasting on Independence Day, and are we really independent anymore? I mean, look at this. We have uh, Gestapo tactics being employed down on the beaches by a private company. Is, yes. that, is, that, is, is that the meaning of independence, or are and, we dependent? And that's supported by our people. Correct. Our our law enforcement and our government is supporting a foreign government. You know, it's a uh, it's pretty bad, and and that's an example of where we're going, of where we are right now. Uh, did you know about um, the uh, the? Um, it's gone from me. Um, don't feel bad. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> Joe, I don't know how old you are, but I'm twice as old as you are. You are exactly twice as old as I am because oh I'm 35. Goodness. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, I should blame you now. The, well, um, you said it, not me. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, the uh, constitutional zone. What is, what is it called? The unconstitutional? Oh, the constitution free zone, I think it is. The 100 zone. mile buffer zone yes. where the border is, yes. Now, that is being claimed down there. They are, they are putting that into their uh, reasons or their logic or their, their legal position. Now, that zone comes about 100 miles out from, uh, from the coastline all around America. Many people don't know about this, but there is no constitution when it comes to search and seizure. It, it mainly has to do with that, or it has to do with the, the enforcement of, of control of the people and laws and searches and so on. If you can imagine, 100 miles inland from all around the United States, there's millions and millions of people living in those zones that, that by U.S. understanding in Washington, they have no, no right. Uh, it's a constitution-free zone. I, I, I dare say 99% of the people have no understanding or, or no knowledge of that, Joe. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Griff, I can tell you this. Uh, up here in, in Pennsylvania... Uh, 
I've been told specifically face-to-face by an attorney 